What's up? My name is Christopher Christopher, and this is my vision from God. I live in Las Vegas, 38 years old. In 2008, I had a dream, a vision from God. And my dream started off pretty regular. It was a bright and sunny day. And I was on the cell phone talking with my uncle. And we were just talking. I know I was cussing, listening to the radio. And, uh, you know, that's when everything changed. From the day I had my vision, I've never been the same. Now, I was as I was driving, I noticed a lot of funny things was going on around me. And my uncle said the same thing. He said something was weird was going on. I slammed on my brakes. And, oh, my Lord, what was in front of me would blow your mind. Right before my very eyes was the four horsemen, the four horsemen of the Bible, of the apocalypse, the ones that I've heard about since I was young. And they were giant knights on giant horses. I remember one in particular that had antlers on his head, looked over at the others and mumbled something real loud, and they all started laughing at me. As if I was the tail end of an old joke, they laughed and I looked with astonishment at them. I knew I wasn't dreaming. They all took off and broke down the shitty street. Now as they got further and further away, I noticed that they faded off into the distance just as they left my sight. All of a sudden, I'm back on the city street. Everything went back to normal. And as I was looking, I thought they were coming back. I started seeing something. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, military soldiers and tanks started pushing people into the street, forcing everyone to get out of their cars, get out of the stores, get out of your homes. At that moment, I knew I wasn't dreaming. I didn't care about what happened to my car. I don't know what happened to my uncle on the phone. The horseman never left my mind. And... As they forced everyone into the street, they pushed everyone into a line, and they started to make us walk. Everyone saw they were evil, and the funny thing was, in my vision, I saw nobody resist. So they made us walk, and we walked, and we walked. I knew at any moment I would wake up, but the Lord did not wake me up, for I was walking. Everything seemed so real. I could hear the gravel underneath my feet and just try to understand how everything went from a perfect day to pure hell and chaos as in a moment. Everybody was crying, men, women. I didn't hear any children in my vision. Every person of every color and religion I saw, then I saw the worst thing that you could ever possibly see in life or face. It was almost dark at that time, and as we were walking in the line, I looked off in the horizon over the city, and behold, my heart dropped. For I saw a whirlwind in the sky, sucking up thousands of lights. The rapture was taking place, sucking up souls of lights. And the Lord was taking his children. And I knew 
I knew right then and there that I was left behind. And I did not know what to do or think, and everybody saw what I was seeing. But what about me, I thought. What about me? Was I condemned for eternity? Was I on my way to hell? The Lord still did not wake me up. And I'm still walking in this line. I knew this was real. So we walked, and we walked, and then we came to a checkpoint. In the distance I was looking, and as I saw the evil men that I passed, looking deeper and darker as we got closer and closer to a facility, to a border checkpoint, we had finally made it to their destination. I remember the, their faces, their evil demonic faces staring at us as we got closer and closer. We came to a point and I thought to myself, am I going to hell? They rounded people up. Thousands of people rounded up, shoved in this line and forced to this border crossing. They were watching us all close. I saw them pushing people over a line ahead of me. And I heard people crying and screaming. And as soon as they crossed the line, they were marked. A big knot would come out of their head giant knot with a scar over it, another person, then another, and then some people I noticed a knot would pop out of their arm, so it's either the arm or the forehead. I don't know what the difference was, but that's what I saw in the faces of these evil men, and then came I. Get in the line, they yelled as they pushed me across the line. Now I remember looking at my arm, and as soon as I crossed, bam, a big old knot would pop out of my arm with a big scarish looking thing over it, and I knew we had been marked. And the hideousness of it, I couldn't stand, so I covered it with my shirt, and I started walking. It didn't matter where you walked from there. I followed the others and went toward a huge concrete building. And I knew from there we were marked because no one followed us from there. I could hear crying in the distance. So I walked in to a giant concrete room. And as I looked around, I saw an entrance and I heard other people crying. So I walked toward that room to see what was going on. Weeping and wailing, rooms full of people, crying. Everyone knew. Everyone knew in their minds that we were going to hell or we are on our way to be executed. We were left behind. A moment later, a girl who I seemed to have known before from my past had came running up to me. And I told her, I have sinned too much, and I pushed her away, and she walked away sobbing. I remember sliding my back down the wall and crouching and putting my head between my knees and crying to the Lord. I even thought about what was next, what they were going to do to us. My eyes were closed. The horror I felt was so real, y'all. Yeah. 
I knew this vision couldn't be anybody else but God, and he made me watch. I watched to the very end. If growth is too weak, well, then we can't withstand weakness overseas. So good news is bad news, and bad news is bad news. Just as I thought it was over, there is still hope. is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the people. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the weak. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His way is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his word is right. I would just to describe him. Oh, yes, he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lave, wait for blood, let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause, let them 
Let us swallow them up as alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird.